Welcome back to another edition of our Jaguar E-Type Barn Find 2 Plus 2 project this is and today is a special edition and it's one of my preferred, my most loved ones because it is the first time you will see the body in paint and you remember from the other videos it has been a real wreck it had corrosion everywhere we had it uh, as it dipped and we had some, some body work to be done but now is the moment to reveal the color so that's the moment to be and you are witnessing this moment and just getting the cover cleared here the result of what we have been working for for the few, last few months or almost a year and here we go what do you think what color that is this is and I have to say I'm loving it it is opalescent silver grey and uh, when you come closer you see this is it's a perfect paint it is not too shiny not too brilliant just as it was in those days it is opalescent and when you come closer here you don't see the sparkling what, what, what I don't like this is how it originally was into the body you remember how it was when it was uh, acid dipped and now we have the same view with, with a paint coat and you see the floor. This will all be covered with sound de-deeming and um, it will all be covered very soon with the, with the vinyl, with the covers on the backrest. So this is the gearbox cover for the, uh, for the automatic. I found these covers, I had one missing here, but you see everything is perfectly covered. And before we start, as I said, before we start getting the, um, the anti-corrosion protection in here, we have to, to install a few bits. Here you see that I had installed these and uh, these are now painted. I'm replacing these now while the hood is the bonnet is down. Don't do that. I put that in here so I have spaces. I put that in here because if you would open the bonnet, this was just squeeze in and squeeze this frame here together. You see the wonderful body lines, just brilliant. And I love this perfect fitting here and you see how neat that is and that is uh, what I really love about this car it has no straight line it is all round and curved and it still fits perfectly so that is why we love the Jaguar E-Type So and here are, before you start anything else on the shell, either you're a DIY or you get that done by, uh, by someone else, by a workshop. So I got that painted by a friend of mine. Most of the pre-work I did myself, but the paint job itself, I left it to him and he did a good job. And uh, so, but then when this is, comes back, I know we're all eager to put something on there. 
and to start with the protection. So before you start, and this is what I have learned, I was so eager that I, the first thing I did, I put that, I, I use Mike Sanders, um, but you can use anything else. And this is um, kind of um, grease. You warm that up and it's a messy job. You warm this up in a, in a pan and then you fill that in here. It has to be about 80, 90 degrees. But the time you're using it with this thin tube here, it is cooling down so quick that um, this is getting stuck in here and you have to warm it up again. I'm using a hairdryer to warm that up. But what I'm saying, these nozzles, they spray everywhere and you don't know where they spray unless it is done. And uh, so this has to be warmed up every few minutes and you have to rush to get that spray into the car and becomes a mess. So you can't really point everything to the, to the corners you want to have it. Therefore, I learned using this after we have installed all these bits because you get all the grease on your, on your body plus you cannot, because these the sound deadening mats we, I'm using here and these have an adhesive backside that has to be warmed up but I'm also using some spray glue on the body itself you cannot apply these when you have used the, um, the anti-corrosion stuff because you have grease everywhere and you can't get rid of it. So I counted the math and I think there are 17 of these which are going into that car. This is heavy stuff and um, that is what I'm starting with. These sound dimming masks, they're everywhere. On the floor, in the sides, in the doors, in the trunk. That needs to be installed. Then. I'm going to install these, these pipes. One is for the, um, the brake vacuum, and that is for the 4.2. The, you, you know those with the 3.8, they have a hose running in front of the, um, the bulkhead. The 4.2 had that inside, and this is for the uh, heating, uh, for the cabin heating, and these pipes have to be fitted before you do all the rest. So that would be the first thing to be fitted. So when installing these um, these hose and pipes, it is um, important to follow a certain order. So first order is this one. There's a long straight one in here, and that is the one which goes in first. And so it's this these posts, and this is a straight one in here. You have to get in from the middle, push it all the way back because you have to go underneath, inside here, there is, um, there is another, another sheet metal and you have to go all the way to the side and then pass underneath. So this is the one which goes in first. And that is um, pretty close to the, to, the, to the bulkhead here. Second one then is this, is this brake vacuum pipe and that goes in here and it's actually, you see this is a lot further away so this one will pass over this hose here, and this is the one, this is where this goes. So the lower one here and the lower one in there. That's the second one going in. And this will, as I said, pass over this one. So you cannot put this one in and then try to fit this, that, that won't work because you have this shaft here and you will never get that in between this hose and the bulkhead. Then you have, the third one, that one goes here, so it's passing over, that's a pretty simple one. And the fourth one is going, this is a valve, and that one goes from here to there, so in here. And that is, um, that is a mounting order. And another tip is when you install these, you see these ends. This one has the, um, the disc on this side, same on this. So they are handed actually. You cannot, there's one direction only and that is, uh, I'm telling you that to avoid all that fiddling in and out again because you have them the, the other way around. You, you see this, this is now, it's located like you have the three holes on this side 
So, but if you turn that around, you see in this case, you would have the three holes on that side. So just to let you know, these are handed the same with the other one in here. They're, they, they only have the, the, the holes towards pointing one side. And if you turn that round, obviously it only fits one direction. You see that here? And, that, and that's what I'm telling you. Just to avoid double hassle, and it's already difficult enough to get one of these in and out. And then I'm installing, I'm installing the, um, the wiper nozzles because it will be grease all over when you apply the, uh, the anti-corrosion. So I will install these and then I will install the wiper rack. Once this is in, I will cover all the car around to not ruin, you know, I, I have been there before, maybe some of you as well, you know, you get stuck with the, with the, uh, with the, with the air and it is dropping everywhere and uh, it is a mess and it's a job nobody wants to do, but it has to be done. And best thing is you do it yourself, then it has been done properly. I have already started with the doors because I tend to forget things and you maybe as well. So these are the doors. They left outside. First advice is, um, it's always good to have someone else making the mistake than uh, being you to make the mistake. And um, smart people say, it's good to make to learn from mistakes. But the smarter people, the very smart people, they learn from those who have done these mistakes before. And you are the smarter ones because I learned that putting the anti-corrosion in in first place is not a good idea because you have to take all the grease off again to install the um, the sound de dimming mats these are glued in here and how do you glue that in when you have that anti-corrosion grease inside so my hoctis advice is install these first and then you spray that stuff over because otherwise Dealing with this is already a nightmare and um, because the trouble is you have to heat the, this stuff up and that's grease I'm, I'm heating that up in a, in a pan and um, So and then I, it is hot already. It is 80 90 degrees. It is hot So you have to handle that with gloves and then you have the the um, a thin house it was a nozzle on top and uh, That has to go through the holes not on the door, but on the shell and because that little house for the holes is so thin, that grease is getting cooled down and the grease gets stuck in that house. So you have to always take that in and out and you're always in a rush doing that. And um, therefore you can't always figure out where the nozzle is spraying that grease. And you might want to have the anti-corrosion or sound de-dimming in that place so you have to clean that all up and that's a, a mess you don't want to do that so please do yourself a favor install these mats first and then apply that anti-corrosion so that that is my advice for today apart from that I'm very happy to have everything back I love the color it is um, it is um, silver gray or palescent and it looks like we have a we have a gunmetal car there and this is just a little bit brighter but not as bright as the silver so this is a, a very nice color indeed i thought it would be a lot lot clearer i don't have that much uh, shine in here it is uh, i love that paint uh, i can't wait to get the components on the car, to get all the chromes in there and have a nice new smell in there. And that will be actually when it's done, it will be a brand new car, uh, but it will be 68, 58 years old. But everything will be as new and can't wait to assemble. And I hope I have done all my homework before so that we can do it like a plug and play. And I told you how to do that, what jobs have to be done in the meantime, what the body shells at the paint shop. And now I hope we have a lot faster progress and get the cars on the wheels as quick as we can. One, one last thing with these doors is that um, I wanted to show you 
that because it's very often it's forgotten. You see here, here, there, there's a hole. It's a draining hole. And that is when the water, rainwater comes in here, it has to escape from somewhere. So there's a hole and you have a, a tube on the inside. And I figure out on, on other original cars, there's a hose which is, which is uh, fixed to the, or it's pushed on. It's pushed on that, that pipe, which is in here. So you put that, don't forget that. You put that hose in here so the water can run down and it should actually exit here right away. So make sure you have that house. It's a very thin, normal, it's just for rain water and uh, or washing water, but you should have that, that leads most of the water running out this hole straight away. So that's my second advice for today. And here's a tailgate. And I got that separately because uh, we need to get that fitted. And there will be one, one of these mats will be applied here. So they will be cut and um, warmed up and glued in here. And it's easier to handle this. We get the covers on here and then we get this installed into the shell one of the last month because it's just disturbing when fitting the other interior stuff then we have our our cover panels here these are for the rear these cover the uh, the rear brakes in the rear ball cut this is the one i got from the states from matt um, uh, that one was missing these are few more covers on the gearbox tunnel so and then we have this bit is which is on the passenger side on the on the on the right hand side of the gearbox cover towards the gearbox and this is has a bend here you see that and this is different to the one for the uh, for the manual this is totally flat but they both have this cutout here and does anybody of you know what this is for i thought that would be for a wire um, you know the wire goes through but I couldn't find a hole there and I'm just wondering probably it is and the 2 plus 2 probably doesn't has it and they probably use this plate where they have the grommet here where the wire goes through so they probably use the same plate and just bend it here to make it fit to the gearbox automatic gearbox so maybe this is only a leftover of this one and you might have wondered why that cake is here actually today is the 23rd of december and it's my birthday and so the, the the shell came back just in time great present so you can count the candles and then you know my age of course uh, i'm a little bit older but uh, i still love that cake is called uh, sherry cake and it's my favorite one. Black Forest. Black Forest cherry cake. Yeah, you might know that. I love that. So I have some friends coming around this afternoon. We're sharing that cake and, uh, and that is why I'm already there. My wife made that for me. It is, uh, it is tradition that I get one for my birthday every year. Um, it happened to be today. And um, so things happen as they come. <laughs>